I put out a video a little while ago that got a lot of people pretty mad with me because I wrote some code that wasn't entirely readable. Um, I, I sort of got clever with my code instead of focusing on making it very easy to read. And then I thought, well, there's actually a way of keeping the code that I wrote, but making it more readable. And one of those ways is with custom properties. And as I was thinking about that, I was like, well, there's actually a bunch of cool things that we can use custom properties for to make our code easier to read or do things like take a property that doesn't actually have shorthands, but has multiple values make shorthands by using custom properties and a couple of other things. So that's what this video is going to be all about. Hello, my friend and friends. Thank you so much for coming to join me once again. And if you're new here, my name is Kevin and here on my channel, I help you fall in love with CSS. And if I can't get you to fall in love with it, I'm hoping to at least help you be a little bit less frustrated by it. And we're going to be doing that in today's video by exploring custom properties, like I said. So let's jump right into the code and take a look. And the very first thing I want to look at is these buttons that I've created right here. And in my HTML, there's nothing too fancy. I have the class of button, but I want these buttons to look different from one another. I don't want them to be identical. So in the CSS, I have my button here, but what I've actually done is I've declared the color and my background color here, like so, where I have a text and BG, and these don't actually exist. And what it's doing is it's using these fallback values of white and brand. So if I were to create a button and not apply any styles to it, we're getting this default styling. And I've done the same thing for my hover and my focus here. And the reason I really like this is because what I can do then is I can come up with my different button stylings really easily. So let's say I do my button. And so on here, I'm actually gonna use a data type. Data type is equal to secondary. And if you're wondering why I'm using a data type rather than using a modifier class, this is with the cube naming convention. It's more focused on data attributes for modifiers. I'm not gonna deep dive that as I've talked about it previously. So there should be a card popping up or a link in the description if you'd like to know more about that. And this first one here has my data type of secondary. And instead of having to have this selector and then also come in and do my hover and then do the same thing, focus again for my hover and focus styles here, I can control everything with this one single selector because I have my text and my BG classes here, or classes, custom properties. So I can say my text is going to be black. My BG is going to be, uh, we'll say light blue. Then I can come and say my text hover is going to be light blue and my BG hover is going to be the black just so we have something happening and you can see that's changed here and it's controlling the hover effect at the same time and then we can copy this over and come down and do this for my accent as well and then let's just come in with this one maybe being a uh, we'll stick with black on that and then this could be a lime green and then my text hover maybe goes to white and this, my background could go to black. And so that one looks like that. And this one looks like that. I'd probably come up with some different styling of what I'm doing here, but just to show you then that it can simplify selectors a little bit. Buttons is a bit of a simple example, but hopefully it gives you ideas on how you could use something like this to expand on things a little bit further. Now, the next thing is something people have gotten angry at me about and how we can actually improve things and take things to the next step beyond that as well. And that is with my container that I have set up right here. And I've looked at how to do this and I did a short on this recently using this CSS instead of doing the traditional width plus a max width plus some padding. And people said, well, this has the issue as it's not as readable. This code is hard to read. Somebody coming across this, you're better to be more verbose, have you know six lines of CSS if you have to have six lines, but at least the code is very readable and you don't get stuck staring at this going, what's going on here? And that is actually 100% true. Um, this is one of those clever solutions that while functional isn't necessarily the easiest to understand, but if we combine this idea with custom properties, that all goes away and we can open up new, really cool possibilities. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come on here, I'm gonna create a max width custom property and we'll use our 60 rem here. We'll come here and do a padding of two rem. And then what we could do is by using those custom properties, we could place them down here. So var uh, max width would go here and then this would be my var padding. And you can see nothing's actually changed in my site. You, everything's looking okay. And I have those two containers are being used here just to hold my content. And this padding one, let's just shrink things down a little bit, is being used here. You can see it's stopping the things from touching the side. So if I increase this value to four, now we have more space on the two sides. So that's how that's working. But And, and this right away, I think, makes 
the more abstract code more readable because now we have a container and we can see I have my max width and I have my padding even though it's getting sort of abstracted away over here. So that's what the first thing that's nice about this but it opens up some cool possibilities. So what I could do is I could then create a container with a data type equals narrow. And what's cool about this now is I could say that my max width on this one is actually, uh, let's go with 40 rem. And then we could duplicate this code right here and I could make this wide and I could have that be 60 and we could even do a uh, full width and have this at 100%. And you could even have one that maybe instead of doing that, it takes the, the margin away on the sides of this padding class, the, whatever we'd call that to create the spacing. And because these are data attributes, again, the nice thing with that is you just come in and you find the container and you do data type equals. And I can just write narrow here. So it's a narrow container. And that works and it's functional, but it has the narrower size. Or I could come on here and say that it's the wide and now it's going to get to a bigger size except it's not getting to a bigger size because I did a 60 and a 60, that was silly, 80. Uh, so that top one should be able to expand further out now, as you can see it does before finally, I know it's going off screen, but you can see that it gets wider. And then of course the full width one, which would just never, you know, it has a full width, it's always gonna be at 100%. And when you come and read this code, I think it's pretty easy and clear what's happening. The other really cool thing with this though, is if you needed to put a custom size on things, you can also do that. So if I came to here and I go, none of these are really working, I can just come in here and on my container also do a style. And here I could say that the max width is, I don't know, 20 rem, just so we can really see it and it gets super, super narrow. And this is one of those things with custom properties that can be really, really nice that you can have them, they're accessible within inline styles like this. And that can be really nice because you're getting all the properties that are associated with that, but being able to change it inline for something more custom on those off chances where that's something that you might need just to make a small tweak on. And so let's get rid of that. But talking of small tweaks, this is also another area where this can be really, really nice. And one of the cool things with custom properties, and that's dealing with properties that don't have shorthands. So let's come in and create a shadow class. So we're gonna do dot box shadow. I wanna say that box shadow has a box shadow. <laughs> and let's say on here we do zero offset, zero offset, and then we wanna do a blur of one rem, and then we wanna do a color of RGB, of uh, 0, 0, 0 over 0.5, just so we have something that's quite visible. And let's come and add a box shadow and we'll do it on our list here. It's not gonna look nice, but style is equal to box shadow, just so we can actually see it come in. And we gotta save both of these. Did I put it on the wrong list? Oh, I did style <laughs> class is equal to box shadow. And there we go, we get that shadow coming in. Again, it doesn't look too fantastic. But then if you had like, say this is actually shadow one, right? So we have shadow one, shadow one here, save both of those files. And now if we wanted to have a shadow two, that's almost the same thing, box shadow two, and then you want the same thing, but it's gonna be like a slight modification. So here it's actually gonna be a two rim. And then you wanted a shadow three, that's going to be box shadow. And this is three and you get the idea, that's my three rim. Well, wouldn't it be really nice if we could just come in and say box shadow, and then we say box shadow is my var horizontal offset, which will default to zero. Then we can have a var vertical offset, which will default to zero. And because we're gonna have a lot of these, it makes it a little bit easier if we just write it this way instead. Um, so var vertical offset, var blur, which we could default to one rem, let's say, var spread, which we could default it to zero and then var color, which we could default to this one. And we could even take this a step further, but let's start with this. <laughs> and we'll, we'll do one last tweak of this at the very end. And then so we have our box shadow there, and instead of doing it this way, again, you could do this with classes and that are modifier classes, there's nothing wrong with that. But then we could come in and just say our box shadow and do um, data and here maybe we do it like data level so like the level of your shadow um, you could probably have a better name for that but just for bear with me for a moment and so we could have a one and then here maybe my blur is 8.5 um, m rem just so we have something a bit different two three so this could be my two this could be my three and then my blur on this one could be a one and then on this one we're doing a two but we're also going to come and change the color to red, just so we can actually see the difference of it when we want to use this. 
So over here where my shadow was, we just have my box shadow data level is equal to one. And we see that coming in. Then we could use the same thing on this one, but this one could be my data level two and it has a darker shadow on it, or it's a little bit bigger of a shadow. Or we could go with our three, which will be the red and even more intense shadow. And then once again, you might want that, but then you need to change one thing just for this one div for some reason. You could come in with your style. Vertical offset is actually going to be uh, three or two rem, hit save, and then it really shifts it down. Or just so we see it a little better, negative two. Again, I'm just showing some of the possibilities here. And this is really, really cool because the box shadow doesn't have shorthands. And normally you have to redeclare everything. And it's pretty cool that you can just come in and make one simple modification to the entire thing. Um, you know, you're, you're just picking and choosing the one property you wanted after breaking it apart like this. So that can be really, really cool. And as I said, we can step this up one step further by actually coming in and changing this to var opacity and maybe default that to a more sensible value of 0.25. So doing that, all their opacities have dropped to 0.25, um, but then all of a sudden, let's go into our number two. So we'll switch this one over to a two, so it's a little bit more intense. Um, and then here we could come in and say opacity, we could say our opacity is a one and let's also change our spread to be a one just so it makes it much, much bigger. And of course I broke everything because this needs to have a value on it, but there you go. Uh, and just to show you, if I take off the opacity, you can see it's dropped back down, put the opacity back up and now we have the nice big opacity. And so yeah, another really cool use case for custom properties and being able to turn non shorthands into shorthands where we can sort of manipulate things individually and do some cool things with them there as well. And if you'd like to know another really cool use case for custom properties, I did a build recently where I had animations going on and I had to change some of the animations on the UL and then I had to change some animations on an LI and I was able to use custom properties to sort of pick and choose which one I was doing individually with one uh, animation declaration, but having multiple animations, choosing when they're playing, when they're pausing and doing stuff like that. If you would like to check out that video, it is right here for your viewing pleasure. And with that, a really big thank you to my supporters of awesome over on Patreon, Jan, Johnny, Stewart, Tim, and Doug, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.